Control structures and loops are essential concepts in C Sharp that allow you to control the flow of your program and repeat specific blocks of code. In this tutorial, I will cover the basics of control structures and loops in C Sharp and provide more in-depth explanations and examples of how to use these concepts effectively. I will also include tips and best practices for avoiding common pitfalls and mistakes and strategies for debugging code that is not behaving as expected. The first type of control structure we will look at is the if statement. The if statement allows you to execute a block of code only if a certain condition is met. For example, you can use an if statement to check if a number is positive or negative. The if statement can also be combined with the else statement which allows you to execute a different block of code if the condition in the if statement is not met. The if and else statements can also be used together with the else if statement which allows you to check for multiple conditions. Something to bear in mind is that conditions in if, else, and else if statements can be any expression that elevates to a Boolean value, meaning true or false. A few common examples include comparisons, logical operators, and checks for null values. Next up is the switch statement, a control structure that allows you to execute a specific block of code based on the value of a variable. It is useful for checking multiple conditions without having to use multiple if else statements while being more efficient and easier to read. However, it is essential to note that the switch statement only works with certain variables such as integers, strings, and enums. Here is an example of using the switch statement to check the status of a customer account. In the example, the switch statement checks the value of the account status variable and executes the corresponding code inside each case block based on the variable's value. It is essential to always include a default case in your switch statements, as this will help catch any values that do not match any of the specific cases you have defined. This is especially important if the variable you are using in the switch statement can take on a wide range of values, as you want to make sure you have a catch-all case in case the value does not match any of the specific cases you have defined. Now let's move on to loops. The first type of loop we will look at is the while loop. The while loop allows you to execute a block of code repeatedly as long as a certain condition is met. For example, you can use a while loop to print the numbers from 1 to 10. In the example shown on screen, the while loop will continue to run and print the numbers 1 to 10 as long as the variable i is less than or equal to 10. Another type of loop in C Sharp is the do while loop. The do while loop is similar to the while loop but it guarantees that the code inside the loop will execute at least once, even if the condition is not met. For example, the do while loop on screen will run and print the number 10 even though the condition i less than 10 is not met. The final type of loop that we'll look at is the commonly used for loop. The for loop allows you to execute a block of code a specific number of times. It is useful for iterating through arrays or collections of data. In the example on screen, the for loop will run and print the numbers 1 to 10. The for loop has three initial parts, the initialization, int i equals 1, the condition, i less than equal 10, and the increment, i plus plus. The initialization is executed once at the beginning of the loop and the condition is checked before each iteration of the loop with the increment being executed at the end of each iteration. When working with control structures and loops in C Sharp, you must pay attention to the conditions you are using and make sure they are correctly formulated. Incorrectly formulated conditions can result in infinite loops or other uninspected behavior. To avoid this, it can be useful to use tools like the debugger to step through your code and check the values of variables at different points in the execution. If you encounter an error when running your code, it is essential to read the error message and understand what it means carefully. Common error messages that may appear when working with control structures and loops include unreachable code detected. This error occurs when there is code that cannot be reached because it is preceded by a return, throw, or infinite loop. To fix this error, you will need to remove the unreachable code or change the control structure or loop to allow the code to be reached. Invalid expression term, else, this error occurs when the else keyword is used without a preceding if statement. To fix this error, you must add an if statement before the else keyword. Invalid token, break, in class, structure or interface member declaration. 
This error occurs when the break keyword is used outside of a loop or switch statement. You will need to use the break keyword inside a loop or switch statement to fix this error. Infinite loop. This error occurs when the condition in a loop is always true, causing the loop to run indefinitely. To fix this error, you need to modify the condition in the loop so that it would eventually become false. To debug code that is not behaving as expected, you can use a variety of strategies, including using the debugger to step through your code and check the values of variables at different points in the execution. This can help you identify where the issue is occurring and what might be causing it. Adding print statements to your code to help identify where the issue is occurring. This can be especially helpful if you are having trouble identifying the cause of the problem using the debugger. Testing your code thoroughly to make sure it is behaving as expected. This can involve manually testing different scenarios and writing unit tests to ensure your code is working correctly. By understanding how to troubleshoot and debug issues that may arise when working with control structures and loops in c you can more effectively identify and resolve problems in your code. Finally, before I end this video, I'll leave you with some tips to consider. Make sure to use the break and continue keywords appropriately. The break keyword allows you to exit a loop prematurely, while the continue keyword will enable you to skip the rest of the current iteration and move on to the next one. These keywords can help optimize your code and make it more readable, but it is essential to use them appropriately to avoid unintended consequences. Format your code consistently and use comments to explain your code. Consistently formatting your code, which could mean using the same indentation style, can make it easier to read and understand. At the same time, comments can help explain the purpose of your code and make it easier for others to understand. Test your code thoroughly to make sure it is behaving as expected. This can involve manually testing different scenarios and writing unit tests to ensure that your code is working correctly. To conclude, control structures and loops are essential concepts in c -sharp that allow you to control the flow of your program and repeat specific blocks of code. You can write more efficient and reliable code by understanding how to use these concepts effectively. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below.